Why hello there, welcome back to my channel. It is of course Chelsea of She Designs Things. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the updates that I have made to my Google site and why I made those updates. So of course, if you'd like to know more, then stay tuned. So first things first, if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name's Chelsea. I'm a professional photographer, web designer, and graphic artist based out of Central Florida. I primarily on this channel make YouTube videos about Google Sites and optimizing them and making them look good. So now you have a little bit of information about me. Now let's just go ahead and take a look at my Google Site. It is nearly impossible for me to tell someone to use something if I don't use it myself. So my uh, She Designs Things website is built using Google Sites, but I do also build and maintain websites in other platforms as well. But because we focus on Google Sites in this area presently, it might I'll say the same, <laughs> I wanted to just kind of show you what I've done versus uh, this versus my old design. So let me just grab my old design. All right, so on the left, I have my new design. On the right, I have my old design. So starting with the image, I updated the image that I have for my promotion in my Google site. And that's because I'm going to be adding new web designs to my Google site. And so I wanted to make sure that I updated it to reflect the newest design that will be coming soon in my shop. The next thing I did was up Date my title text so previously this was not this was not my title text and so when you don't have your title text uh, written correctly for your Google site it oftentimes messes with your SEO and I really wanted to change that and I wanted to add more information so that my title text would show up correctly for SEO so now this is set as my title text and I'll show you what it looks like before versus after if I can find like what it was coming up as <laughs> but this is why I set this as my newest title text so just so you know, title text is also known as your H1. If you're using another platform, your H1 header, you should only have one H1 header on a page. You can have multiple H2s and H3s and Google Sites does not use H4 or 5. So you can have um, just a simplistic layout with the H2 and 3 which are your header and your subheading. And that's how they're written inside of your Google site. Now, scrolling on down, this is how it would show up in the um, old version. I mean, it showed up just like this, so I didn't make any other changes pretty much to my homepage. It looks pretty much the same. Um, it's kind of given the mobile layout of what it will look like. And for some reason, it always shows a scroll bar even when it's not there. I, I promise you, this is not here. And I haven't gone in and, and added the removal of, of this object just yet, but it is what it is. And actually, I needed to switch that. So I used to have round icon buttons, and now I've switched from round icon buttons to square buttons, um, to square social media buttons. I am not using the built-in Google site. Um, social media icons that's because again it's it's if you want to have it it's not necessary when you run your SEO checks believe it or not these still read on your SEO your embedded information actually does read as a part of your SEO so be very careful in your tags and let's see the newest thing I have is adding the stripe logo I switched from using my PayPal buttons because it's just a little bit more work for me to using the stripe buttons instead all right so now let's go ahead and talk about what I changed in the menu the menu now actually contains um, as you can see where it says shop and then there's a space a line and then she designs things I did it this way because and I will show you this just let me see, I'm gonna click on shop the designs. If you look in the very top, right at the top, your SEO is reading that information. Now, typically your meta tag or whatever you'll put in there as your title for your page, um, you can make changes to in other platforms. And, I, and I'll show you what I mean by that actually. All right, so here we have my other site for my personal brand that is aesthetically dope. And in here, you see I have the ability to set up 
SEO and analytics. So you can add your Facebook Pixel ID or your Google Analytics, which I have. Um, upload your fav icon, and then on each page, I can have right in this top, and I'll just delete it so you can see the title. That is what's happening in your Google site. Whenever you are putting in the name for your page, you're actually putting in the page title. So that's the information that's going to show up inside of Google on web browsers at the very top. That's the information you're going to see. So that's why I went on ahead and titled the shop with the information. It does say shop and then the dash i don't know that's just how google does it typically i wouldn't even have the she designs things across the top you would literally just have whatever title you want for it but i digress going forward um if you wanted to say make a change as you can see i don't have the shop going to the shop and then the slash she designs things i have the shop literally listed as the dash shop and that's because you can set your path inside of your Google site. But you first need to know that when you're naming your pages, that's the information you're putting in is your page title. And that is the information that's gonna come across the top of like the, the browser tab. The biggest change to my site comes by way of my shop actually. So before my old shop was kind of, um, kind of a little bit on the long ended side. So it would go, First, you would click on, say, I'm going to go back so you guys can see the shop, like the actual shop. And then if you wanted to see websites, that was the first link you could click. And so it is still the same on the shop page. Like when you click on the shop, that's the first link you can select um, as far as the websites. The difference is instead of me giving like the title and then an image and then a paragraph regarding the specific uh, design and then so here's a full thing of what it looks like so this is what it looked like before it was sectioned out and you know it just got to be too long for me to have to try to keep adding um, pages to it so instead I decided to lay it out almost like little cards so now when you look for designs it just goes for the website templates anyway um, you can view the design so the public notary is presently the latest and these are all the Google sites that I have available for purchase and then these are the ones that are coming soon to my shop and then I also now have added the Canva website designs to my shop as well so you're able to purchase this one and then these three are also coming soon to my shop. Once they're live inside of the shop, they will probably end up back over here. And if you wanna know whenever I add these items to my shop, just make sure you go ahead and sign up down here. So this is using Flowdesk, so this is the sign in form for that, or sign up form for that. Now I'm not sure if I ever covered this in a previous video, but I do have a resources page. Um, the resources page uh, is just information regarding what I use, such as um, fonts and typography, things to help your business, um, things to help for branding, and then of course another sign up form right there. Alright, so the next big thing I changed was my clients page. This was my old clients page. Actually, not this. Let me show you my old clients. Let's see. Here we go. I only listed, I think, three clients in my old clients page. So I've gone ahead and updated it. I don't have all my clients listed in my new clients page. Um, I just gone ahead and added a few thus far because a lot of the projects are present and ongoing. So if I haven't finished an integral part of it, then I'm, I haven't added it to my site. So if you want, you can absolutely go ahead and check out my clients page and you'll be able to see their sites. I don't specify whether or not if I redesigned them in a Google site, at least I don't think I did, but this one is a Weebly design, so not a Google site not a google site and not a google site also not a google site because it's branding photos so you kind of get the point only the more recent ones are using google sites um I, like i said i let my clients choose what platform works best for them if they've already you know established um a connection with a specific type of platform and then also i recognize that google sites does not work for everyone it really doesn't it just depends on um your needs as a business but for everyone, it doesn't, it, it doesn't actually work. 
all right so heading on back to the shop now when you click on something you want to purchase it i did say that i swapped the links out from the previous design which used uh paypal buttons so let me just show you that shop website and say you wanted to buy the naturalist now when you click buy the naturalist you don't have the option for paypal they are now using stripe buttons i just got lazy and got tired of trying to generate them i mean it's not difficult i'm just as i make more designs i don't want to have to add as much details <laughs> or as much information so a lot of times the web designs end up being on my etsy shop first but I would prefer if I just kept them all inside of my own website. So my Etsy store is still up. You're still able to purchase via Etsy. That's always going to be an option buy on, on Etsy. Um, you have the option always to purchase the design on Etsy. So it's just a matter of me, you know, deciding what um, items will be sold on my Etsy shop and what are exclusive to my store. And I do have... Like the designer is exclusive to my store and you can't purchase that inside of Etsy. You can only purchase that directly through my website. Another thing that I have changed in, or I should say updated, is my portfolio page. You'll now see on my portfolio page more things that I have done and created, including this one, which is a project that I am working on myself. And that is called For Font's Sake. So this is something that I am super proud of and it's coming along great. So be on the lookout for this inside of my shop very, very soon. So yay. <laughs> Basically, I'll give you a brief overview. For Font's Sake will be these flashcards with templated examples of fonts and how to use them in a logo along with colors. So I have made branding really easy. Um, you can mix and match them. They will literally just be flashcards. I am hand printing all of them. <laughs> um, I just have a lot of I have a lot of printers. I think I have five printers. I have two photo professional photo printers and a couple a laser printer and just a whole bunch of printers. Just put it that way. So I'm doing it myself. So some support small business. Yay. When I start getting it done, when it's finished, finished, I will definitely be sending out a notice for oh for font's sake. <laughs> Alright, so now you'll also see I have the Boho Photographer website here and the Sedona photographer here, and the public notary is in here, and the therapist too is in here, and the coffee spot is in here, Minolta Orange, and then the Canva sites are also listed in here as well. Scrolling on down, so I have extended my portfolio. Um, <laughs> I do need to add more to my portfolio, not just of the things that I have done, but the things that I have created for my clients as well. All right. So that is pretty much it. I will say that I have so much more that I want to add to my store, um, including for the business essentials. I am working on quite a bit of things that I want to add to the store before the end of the year. And of course I will be doing a holiday black friday sale okay i just i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it so make sure that you uh sign up below if you want to know when the black friday sale begins because it will be completely limited i do not plan on doing um any large sales after this one for obviously the end of the year uh, i might do one in the spring if you can wait that long, that's on you. And some of the things that I'm going to be dropping will be limited designs, meaning once I reach a certain threshold, they will be pulled from my store and you will not be able to purchase it. <laughs> that's right. I, I'm going to pull that card on y'all. And that's because I want to refresh my designs and I don't like people all having the same design or look or layout. So I'm going to help you guys out in pull that design from the store <laughs> all right so i do hope this video wow mostly about my website was helpful in giving you an idea of what you can do inside of your google site if you have any questions about how i got my look my layout my design please let me know i'll be more than happy to walk you through a step by step of how my google site looks the way that it does including why it still looks fantastic on a mobile device hey <laughs>
Alright, thanks so much for watching, and of course, laters.